We begin with a definition of the real numbers system. Now, just a word of caution, this isn't the only definition of the real numbers out there. There are a handful of traditional ways of defining the real numbers, and so don't be surprised if what you see here is different from what you come across in other books, other videos, other courses, and so on. Still, any definition of the real numbers is going to start in pretty much the same way. The real numbers are defined to be a set, containing constants 0 and 1, which are not equal to one another. This set also has two binary operations, addition and multiplication, as well as two unary operations called negation and inversion, inversion being only defined for non-zero real numbers. There is also a relation defined on the real numbers, which we denote using the less than symbol. At least that much should be common to any definition of the real number system. Added to this, we have a series of axioms. You can think of the axioms as being statements that are defined to be true for the real number system. We have these axioms broken up into three different categories. The first nine axioms are called the field axioms. The next four are called the order axioms. And finally, we have the completeness axiom. Now, this is obviously a very long and complicated definition, so let's take some time to go through it slowly. To begin, when we say the real numbers are a set, what we mean is that we're viewing the real numbers as a collection of objects. Those objects are the individual numbers themselves, such as 0, 1, negative 1, 2, 1 half, and so on. This means we're viewing the real number system as the collection of all of these. Next, you'll notice that there are only two real numbers that are included in the definition, those being 0 and 1. And so at this point, we're thinking of the real numbers as being a set that has at least two elements in it, 0, 1, and possibly more. Next, the definition goes on to say that there are two binary operations defined on the real numbers. We can think of a binary operation as being a way of combining two things into one thing or as a function that takes two inputs and returns one output. We can also think of binary operations as being defined by two properties. Looking first at addition, the first property of a binary operation is that given any two real numbers, x and y, x plus y will also be a real number. The second property is about uniqueness. It tells us that if we put in the same two inputs, the binary operation will always return the same output. One way of phrasing this is that if we start with real numbers, say x, y, a, and b, if we know that x and y are the same and a and b are the same, then adding x and a will produce the same result as adding y and b. In other words, putting in the same pair of inputs will always result in the same output. Since multiplication is also a binary operation, it has the same two defining properties. The first being that for any two real numbers x and y, the product xy is also a real number. And the uniqueness property, that if we have two pairs, x, y, a, and b, with x equal to y and a equal to b, then multiplying x and a will produce the same result as multiplying y and b. The next part of the definition says that there are two unary operations. We can think of unary operations as being like functions that take one input and return one output. These can also be defined using two properties, similar to the ones used to define binary operations. Looking first at negation, the first thing we know is that for any real number x, negative x will also be a real number. We also have a uniqueness property that says if we input the same number, we are going to get the same output. We can phrase that as follows. If a real number x is equal to a real number y, then negative x will also be equal to negative y. The same properties are also true for the inversion operation, but we have to remember that inversion is only defined for non-zero real numbers. This means we have the first property that says for any non-zero real number x, the inverse of x is also a real number. And second, the uniqueness property, that given non-zero real numbers x and y, if x and y are the same, then x inverse will be the same as y inverse. The last part of the definition tells us that there's also a relation defined on the set of real numbers, and that that relation is denoted with the less than symbol. The properties of all of these things, the binary operations, the unary operations, the relations, and the constants 0 and 1, are described in the axioms that follow. 
we can think of the field axioms as defining the behavior of the constants 0 and 1, the binary operations addition and multiplication, and the unary operations negation and inversion. We can think of the order axioms as defining the behavior of the less than relation. And finally, the completeness axiom is a slightly more complicated axiom that describes how the real numbers can be thought of as a continuous straight line. This is what differentiates the real numbers from other number systems like, say, the rational numbers. To summarize, we are defining the real numbers to be a set of objects with at least two elements, those being 0 and 1, and further, we're able to add the elements of this set together, we're able to multiply them together, we can negate them, and for all the numbers except 0, we can invert them. We are also given a sort of vague, abstract relation denoted with the less than symbol, and all of these are subject to a series of axioms. We'll talk more about the axioms in the videos that follow. Mm -hmm.